Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, I want to bring you an exciting new space company that recently went public via SPAC merger. Now, the company I'm going to be talking about today is Spire. Now, what Spire does is that they collect, analyze, and enrich a whole bunch of data to turn it into insights from the constellations of satellites. Now, in other words, Spire is a global data analytics company that leverages their proprietary satellite technology in order to forecast the weather, track maritime and aviation, and much more. Now, this is a really exciting company due to the inherent nature of this software business model and due to the fact that they're working in a huge total addressable market. Now, unlike some other companies in the space, they already have seen revenues and they're growing at a very fast rate. So with a quick intro out of the way, let's dive right into what Spire is all about. All right, guys, let's have a little bit of fun and talk about another space back. Now, yesterday, Monday, March 1st, satellite data company Spire announced that they're going to go public via SPAC adding to a growing list of public space plays. Now, the small satellite builder and data specialist, Spire Global, is planning on going public via merger with a SPAC, NavSite. The company's lemur satellites are small and comparatively in inexpensive, each one hosting a variety of instruments. The merger values Spire at 1.6 billion equity valuation based on the pipe, according to the release. Now, I found a really good article that I'll go ahead and link in the show notes, which talks about imagery to insights and the commercial case for geospatial intelligence. Now in this article, they write, another player, Spire, has launched over 100 satellites and currently has 88 on orbit and 12 awaiting launch. The company utilizes its constellation of satellites to solve problems for the maritime and aviation industries and is particularly successful in weather data. Spire's customers use APIs that allow them to integrate their own data and depending on the industry, may track ships, journeys for a maritime customer or monitor frost forecast for agriculture customer. Their CEO talks about how they have three guiding principles, which it calls pillars, which led the company to focus on maritime, aviation, and weather. Now he says Spire has a diverse customer base in terms of industries and regions, and says the company has seen tri triple digit growth over the past few years, attributing the success to Spire's ability to hire the right people, iterate quickly, and stay attuned to customers' needs and challenges. As the applicability of our products is so wide, Rarely a week goes by where we don't identify yet another potential application of our data through a customer conversation or the comment of an advisor. So with that, let's dive right into what Spire is all about. Now, Spire believes space-based data, analytics, and insights is the next great frontier. There's a 52 billion space-based data and analytics total addressable market by 2025, and a 180 to 300 billion long-term market opportunity for weather forecasting. They're looking to inspire, lead, and create the business of space-based data and pioneer the space-as-a-service model. Now, Spire is a modern SaaS platform enabled by proprietary space technology. And they compare themselves to launch services, telecoms, and Earth observation competitors. They have a subscription-based revenue, a software-driven business model, they're vertically integrated products and solutions, and have a multi-purpose constellation. Now, Aspire collects space-based data using a proprietary constellation of multi-purpose nanosatellites. Their software analytics deliver proprietary data, insights, and predictive analytics to customers as a subscription. They're vertically integrated with disruptive unit economics with 180 million of capital invested to date. Now, in 2020, they had year-on-year -year annual recurring revenue growth of 104%, with 141 nanosats launched with 100% Earth coverage. They process around five terabytes of data per day, and they have 235,000 average annual recurring revenue per product customer. Now, Spire believes the space-based data analytics and orbital services market are large and rapidly expanding. In 2020, Spire's total addressable market is 66 billion, and they expect that to grow at an 8% compound annual growth rate to 91 billion by 2025, with their long-term opportunity being around 180 to 300 billion due to weather forecasting. Now, Spire collects data from space one time, and then they can sell it an unlimited number of times. So they collect data from their satellite, they clean this data, they turn it into smart data, and by using AI and machine learning proprietary algorithms, they're able to apply these algorithms to fuse data sets to create predictive analytics and insights, which they can sell many times. Now, they work across a broad and growing range of industries, from maritime to aviation, weather, and orbital services. Now, Spire claims that the proprietary technology stack is proven, at scale, and fully operational. 
It starts from their lemur constellation satellites that feeds into their ground stations, to which their data platform and does all the analysis on that data. They deliver this data real time via their Spire site API, where their customers are able to use the API for their own use case. Because their product can be applied to a whole bunch of different industries, they believe that they can be a leader against all the different competitors in their respective industry. Now their multi-product offering positions it to cross-sell to customers. They believe that they're their only player collecting all three datasets globally and simultaneously to combine them into its products. Now they're pioneering this space as a service model as they're disrupting the satellite value chain with a differentiated customer value proposition. Now this space as a service offering provides fast, scalable, and reliable access to space at a fraction of the cost and time. And it's converting high upfront customer capex into lower operational expenses. Now the development cycle is rapidly faster than the legacy satellite development, which is around three to five years, while Spire is at six to 12 months. And while the cost is very high with legacy satellites at around 10 million, Spire starts at 30,000 per month. Now what's great to see with Spire is that they have recent wins, which demonstrate differentiated value propositions. They already have pretty notable customers such as NASA and the Australian government of national intelligence. Now the NASA use case is for weather, using precise atmospheric and isospheric data for weather and climate research. Spire's rapid growth rate is driven by a considerable upsell. Now they already have over 150 product customers in 30 countries, anywhere from the companies mentioned earlier, with addition to Chevron, the US Coast Guard, US Air Force, and much, much more. Now impressively, they have 104% annual recurring revenue growth in 2020, with 145 plus customer net retention rate, meaning that their existing customers are spending over 45% in 2020. Lastly, they have less than seven months time to pay back customer acquisition cost. So it doesn't take that much time for them to have a customer start being profitable for them. Now Spire is still in its early stages, so it's really important to understand their growth strategy. Now they plan on accelerating market capture with investment in sales, marketing, and product development. Next, they're trying to expand in new geographies and verticals and expand in proprietary data sets in Spire Analytics Engine. Lastly, they plan on extending their capabilities through M&A. Their data sets will help drive better insights, competitive advantage, and additional revenue opportunities, as they're significantly trying to expand into US government, DOD, and Intel community footprint. So with that, let's dive into the financials. Now, right off the bat, it's really good to see that Spire already has some pretty consistent revenue. And since they're a software business, that means recurring revenue. Now in 2020, their ARR is 36 million. However, in 2021, they project that to be around 70 million. So it's around a 100% growth rate. Now in 2020, their non-GAAP gross profit was 18 million with a gross margin percentage of 63%. So it's already great to see that their non-GAAP gross profit is already profitable. And they expect both their gross profit and their gross margin percentage to rise over time. Now for the free cash flow, they're negative 29 million, and they don't expect to see positive free cash flow until 2023. However, that's expected for a fast growing software business. Now, the annual recurring revenue evolution is very great to see. In 2017, they didn't even have 1 million in annual recurring revenue. However, every single quarter after, they increased bit by bit, which translates to 2020 Q4 to be 36 million. Now it's taking them around four years to reach $40 million in annual recurring revenue. And in five years, that number would be 70. So Spire is definitely growing at a very fast growth rate. Now due to the nature of a software business, they believe that their model is capital efficient with significant operating leverage. They have limited additional CapEx requirements with global space infrastructure in place. And they also have attractive operating leverage profile driven by Spire's collect once, sell many times model. In 2021, they have around 69% gross margin. However, in 2022, that number goes up drastically to 82%. And by 2023, they expect gross margin to be 90%, which if they reach scale, would lead to drastic profits. Now in 2021, they expect a growth rate of around 90%. And in 2022, that to go up to 112%. In the years after, it averages around 100%, 
So Spire's revenue projections are looking very good. We talked about the gross margins, which are increasing over time every single year. And they actually plan on reaching adjusted EBITDA profitability in 2022, with free cash flow being positive in 2023. So I think it's really important when investing in this company to really look at their adjusted EBITDA in 2022 and their free cash flow in 2023 to see if they're able to hit their projections. And of course, because they're a SPAC, let's talk about their transaction and valuation. Now, their pro forma equity value would come out to be $1.6 billion. Now, the seller rollover would be 67%, with pipe equity being at 15%, and SPAC shares only at 14%. Now, they compare themselves to vertical SaaS, high growth data and predictive analytics, and emerging space technologies. Now, what's really impressive is that the revenue growth from 2021 to 2022 would be around 112%, and from 2020 to 2025 would be 100% which is drastically above the average of both vertical SaaS and high growth data and predictive analytics, around 30%. Now the gross margins also look pretty healthy compared to the peer average. As in 2021, it's around 66%. However, we talked about in 2025, they expect that to be 91%. This would be above the peer average around 61 to 77%. Now comparing them to emerging space technologies, we can see that Spire already looks the best out of all these from Virgin Galactic to Momentus, Astra, and RST. Now in 2020, they did around $28 million in revenue compared to everything else, which hardly had any revenue. In 2021, they expect that to be 54, which compared to Virgin Galactic and Momentus is only around 20 million. Additionally, their non-GAAP goes profit. And additionally, they're the only company that in 2021 and 2022 would turn a non-GAAP gross profit. Now looking at their price of sales, of 2022, they're looking at around 11 times, which is drastically under comparable companies with a peer average being around 25. Now their price of sales in 2023 would be around 5.4 times, which is additionally under the peer average around 18. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that their transaction is priced at a deep discount to peer multiples. Now the transaction value came out to be 1.2 billion and forecasting for 2022 revenue at 22 times, 20, 26 times multiple, they see a 125% upside to the midpoint. Now, Spire looks like it's trading at a pretty fair value relative to their competitors, and given their attractive financials with their strong revenue growth and their attractive gross margin profile, Spire looks like a pretty compelling investment today. But that, guys, that was my breakdown of Spire. Now, I really like the fact that they're working in data analytics and that they're a software company, which translates to very high gross margins. They're projecting out in 2025 to have around 90% gross margins, and they're already around 70% as of today. Now, the aerospace industry has a huge total addressable market, and even in their niche with this geospatial intelligence, there's still a huge market opportunity. Now, I really like their positioning in this market, and the fact that they're a data analytics company first really gives me a lot of hope that they're going to continue to grow because this industry is going to continue to demand a lot of insights and a lot of data. Now, there's a big market opportunity with the geospatial intelligence market, as there's a lot of different customers that would use their application. Now, we talked about some of the different use cases, such as weather, maritime, and aviation. However, I believe there's a lot more industries that would use their service. Now, I'm really passionate about this industry as a whole, because one, my dad works in the aerospace industry, and as a young kid, I always wanted to be an astronaut growing up. Now, growing up, I realized how bad at math and science I was, so I decided that was probably not the right route to take. However, I'm still really interested in the space, and I do think it has a huge total addressable market. Now, I was looking into other aerospace companies, such as Astra and Rocket Lab, and although I do think the prospects are really bright for these companies, I decided not to invest in them because I don't really know too much about what goes into rocket design and launching different rockets. Data and analytics is much more in my wheelhouse as it's something I work with on a daily basis, so I feel a lot more co confident uh, investing in these industries. I personally believe data and analytics is going to see huge growth over this next decade, and I'm taking a bet on these companies now that they're going to continue to grow over time. Now, data and analytics is inherently a software business model, so as they continue to scale, it will really help boost up their gross profit, which in turn helps out with the bottom line. I feel a lot more comfortable and safe getting into these companies, as I know they're going to get profitability within the near future. So what do I plan on doing? Well, actually, I built a position today around $11, and I feel very comfortable getting in around this price, as it's pretty close to its net asset value. With that, guys, I would love to hear what you think about this company, as well as what you plan on doing with the stock. 
Let me know in the comment section down below what you plan on doing, and I would love to get back to you. With that guys, thanks as always for sticking around, I'll see you in the next video, and let's go get that bag.